Hello, I'm Nafisa Latic. Welcome to this special edition of Across the Balkans from the heart of the Bulgarian capital, Sofia. Join us as we go over two crucial elections that hit the region and how Russia's attack on Ukraine has exposed old political fault lines. In late February, Russia launched what would become one of Europe's largest conflicts since the Second World War. Countries that previously played a delicate balancing act between Brussels and Moscow were caught in the middle. Two of them, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Bulgaria, have just voted for their next governments. For Bulgarians, it was the fourth election in less than two years. The top winner on the night was the GER party, which ruled Bulgaria for more than a decade before losing power in 2021. But no party was close to a majority, making a deeply divided parliament all but certain, a reflection of how polarized this nation is. To understand how Bulgaria got here, we need to go back to June, when then Prime Minister Kirill Petkov's government was toppled in a no-confidence vote. Petkov lost his majority after one of his partners pulled out of a shaky coalition over budget disputes and North Macedonia's EU bid. But many believe it was Petkov's strong pro-Western stance that cost him his job. A Harvard graduate, he sided with the EU and NATO against Russia's attack on Ukraine, refusing to pay for gas imports in rubles. The penalty? Russia cut gas supplies to Bulgaria. He also promised to tackle corruption, a promise in voters' minds that was never kept. I went to meet some of those voters who were fed up with the corruption that has haunted Bulgarian politics. Everything from the energy crisis to inflation dominated this election. One family told me that corruption was the main thing holding the country back. I can say I stopped the corruption for real. Uh, there is a lot of uh, people that working for a minimum of salary, but which is not true. They're getting money off-site. This is also need to be stopped. Everybody complaining that Bulgaria is poor, but that's not true. It's poor because Bulgaria, uh, the Bulgarians actually don't take care of the country. You cannot smoke or you cannot take your trash, for example, on the ground, and everybody just gonna say, oh, it's dirty. Yes, you make it dirty, you make it poor, this is why Bulgaria is in this level at the moment. Everybody, it's more easy to go in uh, abroad, to work there, get money. Uh, you're organized there, you follow the rules, but when you come here, there is no rules in Bulgaria. So there is a lot of things to be changed here, and I hope we make the right choice. This to be done. Their frustration stems from parties like the GER party and its leader, three-time Prime Minister Boyko Borisov, who was ousted back in 2021, but could be set for a comeback. Corruption plagued former Prime Minister Boyko Borisov has dominated Bulgaria's politics for over a decade. Despite being firmly pro-European, Borisov maintained good relations with Russia's Vladimir Putin, which his critics argue strengthened Moscow's energy foothold in the Balkans. And it's that foothold that has left Bulgarians struggling with high gas prices. To find out how crucial the issue is for people here, I spoke to Konstanza Rangelova, a senior energy and climate analyst who said that Sofia's refusal to pay for gas in rubles cost them dearly. Seems like the gas crisis was strongly uh, on the minds of Bulgarians when they went out to vote in this fourth election. But also, it polarized them so deeply. Seems like they can't agree on where do they want their gas to come from. Yes, the political messaging on the gas crisis was so polarized with uh, very conflicting messages. And also from a geopolitical perspective, it, it was very much polarized also from the perspective of where do we stand vis-a-vis -vis Russia that because of these uh, extreme statements from all parties, it was very difficult for voters to find a middle ground that they could settle for and let's say an expert voice that they could trust. So in that case, political parties with very strong statements and very polarized and 
in to some extent um, very political but not expert based statements, they managed to get a lot of the votes and a lot of attention. Would you say that in the wake of the war in Ukraine, this issue was politicized uh, during the campaign? Yes, it was very strongly politicized and it was also one of the key uh, arguments that many of the political parties were using in their campaign. However, only few of the parties managed to get a firm position of where they really stand on this issue and many of them left open a lot of questions and especially on how they plan to solve the gas crisis over the next several months. So because of this, this caused a lot of confusion in the outcome uh, of the public vote shows that in this very mixed election result. What have we learned from Bulgaria's example? Bulgaria and Poland, um, they got their gas cut uh, on behalf of Gazprom very early um, in the wake of the energy crisis that Europe faced. What have we learned from Bulgaria's example? What we have learned from Bulgaria's example is that once you have a direction, you have to stick with it. Because the problem with Bulgaria was that we were put in a very difficult situation when uh, Gazprom cut our gas. We managed to find alternative solutions. They were not optimal, especially from the perspective that Bulgar Gas was looking for alternative gas supplies each month for the next, which exposed it to a lot of price uh, volatility risk, but also supply side risk, because for every single month, it wasn't 100% sure that they will be able to meet the supply gap. So from that perspective, the managing of the crisis showed that Bulgar Gas as a state-owned enterprise was to some extent poorly managed, but somehow managed to find a solution. And when we had the caretaker government come into power, they completely shifted the direction in which we were going, and this caused a lot of confusion and deepened the crisis to some extent. Constanza, let's leave politics aside for a moment. Uh, answer me this question as an expert when it comes to energy. Let's leave aside the war in Ukraine, the political crisis. What is the best for Bulgaria's future, for Bulgarians, when it comes to their energy needs? How to fulfill their energy needs in the best way? We have clearly seen over the last several months that Gazprom does not act as a reliable supplier and that Russia is a very difficult partner because of the very geopolitical nature of our relationship with Gazprom. Because of that, it's in our best interest to find alternative supplies that do not have this geopolitical tension really inside uh, of the whole question. And this means we need to fully diversify away from Russia and find alternative supplies, but also it shows us that fossil fuels and natural gas are not uh, secure from a long-term perspective. And we need to find ways to phase out gas out of our consumption and reduce this consumption as fast as possible. When we look at the, the, the latest results um, and we look at the parliament, it's very fragmented. Uh, are you optimistic that they will be able to agree on how to proceed in the future? No, it's going to be very difficult. And this also poses a lot of question about how are we going to solve the gas crisis, especially for the next several months and the winter period. It's going to be very difficult because without a strong government, uh, it's very hard to say whether we're going to take a firm direction and not just stay in the middle and undecisive about how to act. But now is the time to really find a right solution, not only for this winter, but also for the next several years. Thank you so much for being our guest on Across the Balkans. I really appreciate your expertise on this Thank matter. You. It still isn't clear which direction the new government will head. But one thing is certain, that the GERB won't be like their predecessors and will continue with its balanced stance towards Russia. The strong showing of pro-Russian parties sent a message that voters might want a different approach towards Moscow. The GERB party, whose headquarters is right behind me, is known for its more balanced position than the previous government. And they said they are willing to work with anyone to form a coalition. But some of their potential partners might have very different views towards Russia. Petkov's We Continue the Change party repeatedly said that forming a coalition with the GERB is out of the question, citing his track record of corruption. To get a sense of what was at stake for the country, I spoke to Professor Ivailo Dicev from Sofia University about what the near term might bring. Mr. Dicev, are you optimistic? Will Bulgaria have a new government soon? It's a very difficult situation. 
most people will say that we are heading for another election, snap election. Actually, we are competing with Israel, one would say. <laughs> but uh, see, still, it is possible. There is a possibility for a sort of program government without politicians uh, for a limited amount of time, of six months, for one year. Because uh, Bulgaria is a very, in a very difficult situation and uh, inflation is very high, there is this war in Ukraine, so that there is a possibility for the parties to decide that the leaders should step back, especially Bojko Borisov, who, who is somebody who is suspected of various criminal deeds. But in 2020, we've seen a massive uh, unrest uh, here in Sofia uh, against corruption. They, they want a change. Now, Borisov and Ger party is again first. Uh, that's a very well organized party with a lot of people in the local authorities around the country, uh, with a strong hand of uh, the media, with a lot of money in the bank, so that they have the same amount of elect electorate. But uh, um, the turnout was very low. And when the turnout is low, it is only the very motivated people who, who actually... But make... big difference this time, when you look at the parliament, we are seeing a rise of pro-Russian parties. One of them is really a pro-Russian. It is called revival, the Zrazdane. Um, they want us to uh, uh, leave the NATO, uh, uh, not accept uh, the euro as a currency, these sort of things. So they got something like 10%. It's not so much. It's like a little bit like Germany. Alternative for, for, for Deutschland, they have 12%. It's like that, these this sort of parties. So that's not a, not a problem. But um, unfortunately, there is a lot of people around the country who... they That's a sympathy, historical sympathy for Russia. They, they don't follow so much the news, they don't know what happens in, in Ukraine, so that's... So are we seeing Russia's comeback uh, in Bulgaria in the wake of the, the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis? There is a possibility for a coalition to be formed, Euro-Atlantic coalition, they call it, a large coalition, if this politician step back, especially Boyko Borisov, so that on the right uh, there are big parties who, who could form a coalition which will be anti-Russian. Uh, that's a possibility and uh, European Union and America push for that, that they very much want us to form such a, such a government. I don't know whether it, it will happen. That's the dilemma, anti-corruption or anti-Russia. What do Bulgarians want? Are they polarized? Bulgarians want a government. Pro Bulgarians want a government. Russia is not so much an issue. They, they don't want us to get involved in this. Uh, the main problem with Russia is the gas. Uh, natural gas, which comes from Russia. Russia stopped the gas. <laughs> so the this, uh, caretaker government now is try, trying to ask them for more, but they don't, they don't answer even. So that uh, this Russian topic is now not so, so important, I think. Uh, inflation is very, very important. High inflation, over, over 10%, something like 14, 15%. So that I think that um, there is a possibility, especially if war gets worse in, in Ukraine, to, to have a pro-Western pro uh, alliance. Thank you so much, Professor Thank Dice, you. for your time for us on Across the Balkans. Bulgaria isn't the only country caught at the crossroads. Voters in Bosnia and Herzegovina also went to the polls. There were a string of firsts. The first time a candidate for the Bosniak member of the presidency isn't coming from the ethno-nationalist party. The first time the Bosnian Serb member of the presidency will be a woman. And it's the first time the high representative imposed election changes right after polls closed. Semir Sejfovic reports from the capital Sarajevo. It's time for general elections in Bosnia and Herzegovina and 3.3 million citizens will have the right to vote in a country with one of the world's most complicated political systems. And some candidates want out. 
Bosna i Hercegovina nije mjesto za nas. Bosna i Hercegovina je mjesto koje nas stalno suzbija. Bosna i Hercegovina je zabluda. The Bosnian Serb leader is calling for the entity of Republika Srpska to break away. The former president is aspiring for the job once again. And he's flexing his pro-Russian arm to promise voters that the region will either become independent one day or unified with Serbia. Republika Srpska ima Milorada Dodika koji može da telefonom nazove Putina i da sutra vidi s njim. Dodik is under sanctions by the US State Department and so are members of the Croatian HDZ. But that has yet to prevent anyone from spreading far-right populism. In the city of Mostar, resident and political analyst Hussein Oručević says the policies of the HDZ are intolerance that serves as a tool. Nažalost, politički programi, pošto ih nemamo, su pretvoreni u programe mržnje. To znači da su partije preuzele funkciju institucija, urušavaju institucije državne kako bi se oni pitali o institucijama. Zato je mržnja koktel koji može stalno da bude politički korišten. The deep-rooted political entanglement stems from the Dayton Peace Agreement. While it brought an end to the war in the early 90s, it also divided the government along ethnic lines between Bosnian Serbs, Croats and the Muslim Bosniaks. And it makes it hard for pro-Bosnian Croat leaders like Željko Komšić to offer systematic reforms when division is what sells. Iz godine u godinu mi samo ulazimo u veće i veće konflikte koji su, nažalost, nažalost, dominantno postaju etnički. Čak u posljednje vrijeme dobijaju vjersku crtu jer se govori o muslimanima, strahu od muslimana, zapravo prava, pravi fašizam, prava islamofobija. Despite being elected democratically, Komšić's legitimacy is often brought into question by the HDZ and its leaders who are bothered by his loyalty to Bosnia and his political alliance with the Bosniak Muslim parties like the SDA. He's even accused of not being a true Croat representative. Sam jedini kandidat hrvatskog naroda i hrvatskog narodnog sabora. Nit smo se bavili s nekim drugima u vrijeme kampanje, ne bi sad komentirali nekoga jer mi smo ja sam išla za kandidaturu hrvatskog člana predsjedništva. Nastavimo štititi interese svog hrvatskog naroda za Bosnu i Hercegovinu poruku bez hrvatskog naroda, legitimni predstavnika hrvatskog naroda nema budućnosti Bosne i Hercegovine, se mogu donas političke odluke u ime Bosne i Hercegovine. While some are playing the same old tune, newly elected reformists are attempting to stir change. Građanima Bosne i Hercegovine želim reći da moraju i da moramo svi da se mijenjamo na bolje. Pogledajte, imamo najljepše rijeke u Evropi, ali one su pune smeća i kesa. Izvinite, zato nam nisu krivi ni Dodik, ni Čović, ni Izetbegović. Morat ćemo se svi u ovoj zemlji mijenjati. For years, political parties with nationalist agendas have used loopholes within the ethnic-based constitution and the 1995 Dayton peace deal to block formation of governments and much-needed reforms. Now, the high representative, who is under a UN mandate, wants to make sure those practices are prevented in the future. It is crucial for the destiny of this country that there will be no blockades. That is why I imposed measures that will improve the functionality of the institutions of the Federation. They will enable all citizens to have their voice heard and to assure them that those whom they elect will represent them. But the changes applied only to the federal entity shared among Bosnian Croats and Bosniak Muslims. Voters in Republika Srpska elected Dodik to lead the entity and his candidate Željka Cvijanović to be the Serb member of the Bosnian presidency. Continued gains of parliament positions by nationalists has many people worried the ethnic divisions are becoming part of society. Ethnically and divisive rhetoric was frequent and was more prominent than issues related to social welfare, economy, economy and corruption. With the rise of the far right in the EU and the conflict in Ukraine, 
nationalism echoes a troubling past with which Bosnia and Herzegovina is all too familiar. Semir Sefovic, TRT World, Sarajevo, Bosnia. Adnan Cherimagic is an expert on the Western Balkans and he is my guest today. Adnan, great to have you with us on Across the Balkans. Um, before I go into the results, I do want to discuss the decision by the High Representative Christian Schmidt to impose the election law changes on the election night. How surprising was this? Uh, I would say shocking. I think yesterday should have been a celebration of a great achievement, and that is that Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, almost 30 years after the end of the war and uh, peace, ninth general elections taking place that have been just a couple of minutes ago described as overall democratic, competitive, and in accordance with the international uh, standards is actually, when you look at back at the uh, other places in Europe, which in 1990s had war, uh, is an exception because these kind of elections that are taking place on the entire territory of the country, that you know that that some races were competitive, that were not clear until the end who's going to win, that there were different candidates, uh, and that, that some candidates which we expected to win have actually uh, lost is really rarity. So somehow Christian Schmidt uh, and the Office of High Representative have stolen. Uh, the night have, and have stolen this actually a great uh, moment for Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, its uh, democracy. I think it has overshadowed, it was unnecessary, it's not going to achieve uh, what he has laid out as uh, aiming to achieve. He said he's going to save the federation from the collapse and the country from uh, from uh, collapse, but that's not what he's going to do. I think he's going to do quite contrary. He's going to uh, deepen the image of Bosnia and Herzegovina as being non-functional, as being a special case. He's going to play into a narrative of Milorad Dodik, who we're seeing potentially to win, who has been arguing that Bosnia and Herzegovina is a failed state. And he's going to make those countries in the EU that are against Bosnia and Herzegovina progressing on the EU path to say, well, what uh, he did Adnan is... He definitely did overshadow uh, the actual results, but I do want to talk uh, a little bit about the results as well. Lots of firsts for Bosnia and Herzegovina. First time we have uh, Bosniaks being represented in the presidency from someone who is not coming from the Ethnic Nationalist Party. We have a first woman as a member of the presidency. But what, uh, what are we looking uh, here at now? What kind of parliament uh, are we going to have uh, in Bosnia in the future? I think what these elections have also shown is that when a group of parties come together, put forward a candidate uh, and have some sort of an offer for the voters, they will go out and vote for that candidate despite whatever someone from the outside or inside the country or the traditional uh, support to whom it might go will will happen. We also have seen yesterday uh, president of SDA and the candidate Bakir Izetbegovic accepting uh, his defeat and uh, saying that he's going to respect the results of the elections. And I think that's a that's a tremendous uh, result. I think when it comes to the parliament, uh, when it comes to the traditional parties or parties that have been on the forefront of the of the coalitions like uh, Miller Atodic's SNSD or Bakir Zedbegovic's SDA or uh, Dragan Chovic's HDZ BIH, I think they will continue to be these uh, main uh, three main parties in the country. What is changing however, is who are going to be their potential co coalition partners <coughs> or if alternative coalitions uh, might be built without one of the three political parties. Uh, Adnan, you know, I'm speaking to you from uh, Sofia, where we also covered Bulgarian elections. And one of the main topics here was uh, energy crisis, the relations with Russia. In Bosnia and Republika Srpska, seems to be that Milora Dodik is projected again to win, who is a close ally of Vladimir Putin. What is this result uh, telling us? Well, it's telling us that uh, in particular EU policy, which should be on the forefront uh, of uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the region, does not have the impact or the power that it once had. 
I will remind you, Miller Ardotic has been sanctioned not just by the US and the UK, but also bilaterally by German government and several other governments. We have seen, uh, you know, European Commission cutting funds for uh, Republika Srpska entity in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have seen Germany cutting its funds and supports for Republika Srpska. But we see that it seems that was not enough as a signal to voters uh, to choose uh, someone else and uh, at the helm of Republika Srpska. So I think uh, what the, the res these results show is uh, they beg uh, Brussels and member states of the EU together with the partners of the US and UK to sit and fundamentally rethink what the policy, what their policy towards Bosnia and Herzegovina is and what it will be. And Adnan, I have 20 seconds. Uh, if you could describe me the elections in Bosnia in five words, which words would you choose? The latest vote. Huge success uh, under shadow of one man having a power uh, to take uh, to take the limelight of 1.6 million Bosnian and Herzegovinian voters and over 500 uh, uh, candidate uh, over 5,000 candidates who ran for the elections. Adnan Cherimagic, great to have you with us on Across the Balkans. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. In Bosnia and Herzegovina and here in Bulgaria, the elections exposed a deep divide. Doubts about any future government led to a low voter turnout in both countries. And for the newly elected officials, even if they manage to form a coalition, they will have to confront a greater challenge this winter. How to navigate the fallout from Russia's attack on Ukraine. Thanks for watching Across the Balkans. From me and the whole team here in Sofia, bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.